tell him I know way. Ben Shock, a Phoenix cop, heads to Las Vegas with the mission to escort Gus Molly, a prostitute set to testify against the mob. He believes his reputation for getting the job done secured him the assignment, unaware that his superiors view him as disposable. Gus, portrayed by Sandra Locke, feels the weight of her situation. She knows this trip could seal her fate. The atmosphere is thick with danger, as Vegas has turned their journey into a betting event, with odds stacked against them making it alive. Every turn presents new traps, and it becomes evident that they are not just racing against time, but also against unseen enemies determined to stop them. As they navigate the treacherous landscape, their survival hinges on quick thinking and a bond that starts to form amidst the chaos. The stakes rise higher, and with each moment, trust becomes their only weapon as they fight to reach safety. The place is swarming with squad cars. Hell, Ben, even with this pig iron, it's so The production of The Gauntlet was written by Dennis Schrack and Michael Butler, originally set to star Marlon Brando and Barbara Streisand. Brando withdrew, leading to Steve McQueen's replacement. However, differences arose, ultimately resulting in Eastwood and Locke stepping in. Now, anybody here know more about the law here than me? Any lawyers here? Any law Director Sam Peckinpah wanted to direct The Gauntlet with Chris Christopherson as the lead. Walter Hill also showed interest and approached Christopherson. Peckinpah and Christopherson decided to make Convoy instead, with Ali McGraw as co-star. And he told me if I screamed, he'd pull the trigger. Describe. In 1977's The Gauntlet, Eastwood predicted that Locke would win an Academy Award, but she wasn't even nominated. Locke, who was in her mid-30s, pretended to be four years younger during a promotional interview. Despite turning 33 in May 1977, her age was published as 29 in November. Hang on. Yeah, we got her 70 to 1. 70? In the 1977 movie The Gauntlet, Locke and Eastwood played characters who did not want kids, mirroring their real-life decisions. Despite the protagonist's family aspirations in the film, Locke ended two pregnancies by Eastwood's side. Interestingly, Eastwood fathered at least eight children from various relationships, but only one child lived with him. This contrast between their on-screen roles and personal lives adds an intriguing layer to their dynamic in the movie. It's a fascinating parallel that showcases the complexity of the characters they portrayed on screen compared to their private lives. The Gauntlet explores themes of family, choice, and consequences, highlighting the actor's personal experiences regarding parenthood. This juxtaposition enhances the depth of the film's narrative and adds a layer of authenticity to the characters' relationships. Through these nuanced performances, the audience gains a deeper understanding of the characters' motivations and struggles, creating a compelling viewing experience that resonates long after the credits roll. Especially a flunky like you. The sheriff whistles, you squat, and what he does to you. In the 1977 movie The Gauntlet, Locke was older than the grandmother of Eastwood's youngest child. The motorcycle helicopter chase sequence was built without an engine for the crash. The helicopter crash scene cost $250,000 to film. It required about two dozen people to construct a 75-85 feet tower, which was blown up by the special effects crew. The special effects crew for the gauntlet consisted of about 35 people, and operated on a budget of $1 million. Chuck Gaspar, the special effects expert, described it as the most challenging task he had ever undertaken. The Desert Highway House, a key set that was shot up in the film, cost $250,000 to construct, and featured an impressive 7,000 drilled holes for squibs. A dedicated team of 15 men spent eight days each month rigging the house for the intense shootout sequence. With only one opportunity to capture the scene, precision, and expertise were paramount to ensure the success of the shot. You hear me? It's who? It's Commissioner Blakelock. Somehow he's tied in. In 1977, the gauntlet featured an iconic scene where Eastwood designed a house to crumble, as if devoured by termites. During the thrilling final moments, test audiences eagerly shouted for the bus tires to be shot out. What made this sequence even more intense? was the fact that numerous police officers participating in shooting at the bus were both active and reserve members of the Phoenix Police Force. The realism and tension created by their involvement added a palpable authenticity to the film's climax. Bad. 
1977, Clint Eastwood starred in a cop movie where he portrayed a police detective not named Harry Callahan, distinguishing it from his iconic role in the Dirty Harry series. This classic is one of three such films from that era, with the other two being Tightrope and City Heat. Following the release of this movie, rumors emerged about a romantic relationship between Eastwood and his co-star Locke, sparking public interest in their off-screen connection. The captivating storyline and Eastwood's commanding performance captured the audience's attention, further solidifying his status as a legendary action star. All set? Ready. In 1977, Clint Eastwood starred in the action movie The Gauntlet, where he calmed Sundra Locke down when they encountered a king snake. Locke eventually allowed the snake to climb over her body. The film is known for its intense action shootouts, but is often criticized for its over-the-top ending. Despite this, The Gauntlet remains a popular choice among fans of action-packed movies for its thrilling sequences and Eastwood's charismatic performance. Any 10th race at Anita! The wagon's outside. Released in 1977, The Gauntlet made a significant impact on popular culture. This classic movie was well received during its time, captivating audiences with its thrilling action sequences and engaging storyline. Following its release, The Gauntlet spawned various spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations, further solidifying its place in entertainment history. The movie's legacy continues to influence the film industry, and remains a beloved part of cinema history. The casting for the 1977 movie The Gauntlet involved a meticulous process to select the key actors for their roles. Clint Eastwood, who played the lead character, was already a well-established actor and was chosen for his charisma and action star appeal. For the role of Gus Malley, Sandra Locke was selected after chemistry tests with Eastwood showed they had great on-screen rapport. Supporting actors like Pat Hingle and William Prince were chosen based on their previous work and auditions. The pivotal moments that defined the casting were the screen tests that showcased the actors' ability to embody their characters convincingly. Ultimately, the cast came together seamlessly, bringing the film to life with their performances. Are you shorty? And you, uh, give me a the directorial vision behind the 1977 movie, The Gauntlet was centered on creating a gritty and intense action film. The director aimed to blend elements of suspense and adrenaline pumping sequences to keep the audience engaged. Drawing inspiration from classic westerns, the director infused the film with a sense of rugged determination and justice prevailing against all odds. Their style was characterized by dynamic camera work emphasizing the high-stakes nature of the story. In collaborating with the cast and crew, the director encouraged a sense of camaraderie and dedication to realizing their vision. They worked closely with the actors to bring out strong, authentic performances and with the crew to ensure seamless execution of the film's action sequences. By fostering a collaborative environment, the director was able to harness everyone's talents to create a cohesive and impactful final product. I appreciate what you did back there in the ambulance. If you hadn't pulled me back in, I'd have been... My job just to get you back to Phoenix and... The production of the 1977 movie, The Gauntlet involved intricate set design and shooting in various locations. Logistical challenges such as coordinating stunts and large-scale action sequences were prevalent. Innovative techniques like using special effects for explosive scenes were employed, enhancing the movie's visual appeal. It really sucks, you know what I mean? How much on what, sport? The musical score and soundtrack of the 1977 movie The Gauntlet were crafted to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the film. Composers and musicians worked diligently to create music that perfectly complemented the on-screen action and heightened the audience's engagement. The score was designed to evoke tension, excitement, and emotional depth, sensing up with the movie's thrilling sequences and character dynamics. By blending orchestral arrangements with modern sounds, the music effectively underscored the drama and intensity of the story, enhancing the viewer's overall experience. The composers and musicians involved in this project demonstrated their skill and creativity in shaping a soundtrack that left a lasting impact on the audience. Yeah. Look, uh, anyway, the big news is... In one iconic scene from the 1977 movie The Gauntlet, 
Director Clint Eastwood masterfully captures the intense bus chase sequence, showcasing his skillful direction. The audience is on the edge of their seats as Eastwood, also playing the lead role, delivers a riveting performance that truly immerses viewers in the action. The cinematography expertly conveys the high stakes and adrenaline-filled pursuit with dynamic camera angles and fast-paced editing adding to the excitement. This scene leaves a lasting impact on audiences, drawing them into the heart-pounding thrill of the chase. Additionally, the filmmakers and actors involved in the gauntlet have expressed their admiration for this particular sequence. Eastwood's attention to detail and his ability to balance tension and entertainment are commended by his colleagues. The actors praise Eastwood's dedication to authenticity and his vision for creating a memorable cinematic experience. Overall, this scene stands out as a testament to the collaborative efforts of the cast and crew, leaving a lasting impression on audiences for years to come. Thing you're lighting out here, I ever see your ass again, you had it. The 1977 movie The Gauntlet had a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences through its action-packed storyline and engaging characters, leading to its popularity in pop culture. The film's themes of corruption, justice, and perseverance spark discussions about societal issues like police brutality and political corruption. With its powerful portrayal of a lone cop fighting against a corrupt system, the gauntlet left a lasting impact on viewers and contributed to the ongoing dialogue about ethics and morality in society. Damn what you heard, I'm telling you what happened and who set me up. Proof? The Gauntlet, released in 1977, received mixed critical reception, while some reviewers praised its action sequences and direction by Clint Eastwood. Others criticized the thin plot and lack of depth in characters. Despite this, audiences seemed to enjoy the film for its entertainment value and thrilling moments. Although The Gauntlet did not receive any major awards or nominations, it still holds significance for those involved in the film. Being part of a movie directed by a Hollywood icon like Clint Eastwood would have been a memorable and formative experience for the cast and crew. The production itself likely garnered respect within the industry, even if it didn't translate into prestigious accolades. Overall, while the critical reception may not have been stellar, the experience of working on a Clint Eastwood film is undoubtedly a highlight for those involved in the gauntlet. Pull over. What? Pull over and stop. During the filming of the gauntlet in 1977, there was an interesting incident where a stuntman was supposed to crash a car through a window. However, the stunt went wrong, and the car missed the window, crashing into a wall instead. Fortunately, the stuntman was unharmed, but it was a tense moment for everyone on set. Another memorable moment was when Clint Eastwood, who starred in and directed the film, performed a dangerous stunt himself without using a stunt double. His dedication to the film impressed the cast and crew. Despite the challenges faced during production, the team worked together to create an action-packed movie that has since become a classic in the action genre. Yeah, you've got a horse in the 10th race called Mally No-Show. Got a line on her? Hang on. The 1977 movie The Gauntlet holds a significant place in film history for its action-packed storyline and dynamic performances by Clint Eastwood and Sandra Locke. This gritty film, directed by Eastwood himself, influenced future filmmaking by showcasing intense scenes and intricate stunts that set a standard for action movies to come. The gauntlet inspired a generation of filmmakers to push boundaries in their work, aiming for realism and high-octane excitement. Its legacy lives on in the action genre, with many subsequent works drawing inspiration from its groundbreaking approach to storytelling and action sequences. A stupid thing could have happened. Maybe even one of you girls, huh? Have you watched The Gauntlet from 1977? Share your experiences and memories about this classic movie. Tell us how it touched your life or shaped your views on cinema. Engage with us by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic discussions. Your voice matters in our film community. Like cattle for being so trusting. I mean, did you ever stop to think about that?